we're very against Trump and everything that he said about all people, and we're here supporting all people and all lives. So, <laughs> so what is it you don't like so they about support Donald ISIS? Trump? That he's racist and sexist. Basically, he's a bigot, and we don't agree with that at all. Do you agree if he's done microaggression? Um, <laughs> uh -oh. Because she's definitely not feminist. She uh, supports her uh, husband, who has been involved in many sex scandals and yeah. also is involved in hiding that. That's why I'm not very political. Hillary Clinton, on the other hand, though, doesn't bash races like how Trump has, like so local. Trump like Muslim attacks that happen more often in this country. There are a lot of like high schools that are being like children being attacked because of what he said about them. Well, you know, in Saudi Arabia, they behead people, they degrade women, they kill them, and she takes money from Saudi Arabia. We're not Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah. She right. So why do we so want it to be like hate, that? She is doing the same thing. I don't suppose. You know, Joe, I don't think logic's going to work with her. Yeah, signals. No, I haven't followed her much, but I followed everything that Trump has said, and we're very, very, very much against him, so we're here trying to... So what is the name of your group? Um, we don't have a group right now. We're just in the College of Charleston. We organize people to come rally for, like, against Trump that had the same motives that way. So a lot of people here are um, anti-government, So, and I'm not, I'm not associated with them. So. Yeah, let's talk to the anti-government people. Those are the ones I want to hear from. <laughs> Again, that's Joe Biggs well, talking to a low-information protester. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. Was a little bad. Hey, Joe, if you can still hear me, uh, they just had some people say, uh, uh, stand with Rand or something about Rand uh, as a protest, their chant. If they throw them out uh, as they're leaving, uh, see if you can interview those people. Maybe those are the anti-government people she was talking about. Yeah, um, well, I saw the, the Rand Paul group uh, in large number. And uh, they were standing right in front of the Coliseum, actually, David. And the police immediately, within, I'd say, a minute, minute and a half, made them leave around the back side of the Coliseum. And at that point in time, they were like, you know what, screw this. So they yeah. calmed down, and I guess these are the guys that are probably inside. Could and, be, could uh, be. Uh, yeah. You know, so we'll put, try to put them in there. They, they got to they gotta get them corralled into their First Amendment area like they did the, the people speech, at the Bundy so. Ranch. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they actually did. <laughs> they set up over there once kind of uh, ignored it and stayed clear of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. I didn't see Chris Christie say. All right. Well, you're kind of breaking up a little bit there. We're going to go back to the debate. Uh, this is a question from uh, Ted Cruz here, talking about how awful Barack Obama is. Surprise. We need to secure the borders, and at the same time, closing statements. Barack Obama more authority to allow Middle Eastern refugees coming in when the head of the FBI tells us they cannot vet them to determine if they are ISIS terrorists. Maria, let me clear something up here. This is an interesting point. Okay. Talk about Who is for immigration? Well, we know. Yeah, let's Rubio get to, let's ask at the very end when. Here we got the two guys. Turned off the snooze fest. Two guys, neither of which are qualified in the Constitution to be president because of citizenship <laughs> requirements, debating immigration. <laughs> How's that for irony? Now you say you're against it. You used to say you're birthright citizenship. Now you say that you are against it. And we need an H-1B visa program for president. I'm serious. Now yeah. you're against it. We don't have enough qualified well. candidates here that want the job, so we need to bring yeah. in foreigners. I'm sure we could find somebody in Cuba better than either of these two guys with an H-1B visa, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do I find somebody who's suffered under Castro for decades and really wants freedom and, and have them run instead of these two clowns? Wow. Right, they'll understand that they don't want to live under a tyranny. Like Lily Tang in China. Exactly, exactly. Lily Tang, the libertarian. Uh, what state is she in? I believe she's in Colorado. That's right, Colorado. Colorado. Lily Tang Williams, we've had her on the show. Um, if you're in Colorado, vote for Lily Tang. That's a definite She lives under tyranny, so she knows you probably like. listen to her when she yeah. recognizes it. And yes, the only budget yes. You have ever voted she can smell it a mile away. The Senate is a budget from Rand Paul that brags about how it cuts defense. Here's the bottom line, and I'll close with this. If I'm president of the United States and Congress tries nope. to cut the military... Rand should be tweeting about this. I just mentioned Rand Paul. Yeah, he can respond. <laughs> you know, we should never, ever cut a dime from the defense budget, right? And to yeah. just... And, and make it clear, I mean, look at how many wars we're fighting right now. I mean, that just... <laughs> <laughs> we need that money. We started at least six wars. Well, I mean, like, as they keep saying, our, our military is so weak and wimpy. I mean, I don't know how we're going to defend ourselves against anybody with the largest military and... You know, planet history. Well, the thing that's really frightening is the fact that now we have these terror attacks coming to American soil. We have people, you know, getting radicalized on the Internet and planning to do attacks here on U.S. soil. So now they're going to have to have military 
stationed here to protect us. So, I mean, it's everywhere. And that's really frightening to me. Mm -hmm. 12 million illegals. I opposed and oppose legalization and citizenship. And by the way, the attack he keeps throwing out on the military budget. He opposes citizenship. Well. <laughs> See, that's why he, he's the Canadian who opposes citizenship. $697 billion. What he said, and he said it in the last debate, it's simply not true. And as right, president, I will re- As president. And keep this All right, we have to stop. I, I know you have very passionate about that. <laughs> Governor, Bush, Governor Bush, fears have gripped this country, obviously, and you touched on earlier since the San Bernardino attacks. Since our last debate, the national conversation has changed, according to Facebook data, as well. Now, this first graphic shows the issues that were most talked about right before those attacks and now after. The issues of Islam, right. security, and ISIS. Now, government ethics. The FBI oh. says they're using social media. And that's exactly why they ramp up that fear, so people stop yeah. paying attention. No, let's not to talk all about the ethics. real things. Let's talk about Islam. Yeah. Let's talk about the boogeyman. It is private. Period. Do you agree, or would you try to convince him otherwise? I would try to convince him otherwise, but this last back and forth between two senator, backbench senators, you know, it explains why we have the mess in Washington D.C. We need a president that will fix our immigration laws and stick with it. Not wait a minute. Tell world. us. And that's not you, Jeb. Yeah. <laughs> okay, they ask him if he wants to outlaw privacy. So that we okay, because that's what what it, we're talking about here. Uh, when he, he mentioned the Tim Cook issue, they want to backdoor into everything. They want to be able to hack everybody's communication, listen to everything that we have without a warrant. And so, yeah, let's uh, talk about what was just said before. I don't want to get into that. You don't mind. So, so Tim Cook, the so Tim Cook I got is, is going to keep it private. I got uh, that. And the, the, the problem today. I, hang on, I want to hear what he has to say about privacy here. DC. There needs to be more than just one meeting. There needs to be complete dialogue with the large technology companies. They oh, see, that's how we determine what our our constitution says. We get with the large corporations and the CEOs, and they hash it out between the multinational corporations and the people that they bought, and they decide what our Liberties are. Right, and we Thank go you, to Jeb. Yeah. Thank you. That's the Jeb Bush and the George W. Bush model and the Barack Obama model. And these guys are complaining because Apple is putting some technology and makes it a little more difficult for police to get your information, which I have no issue with. You know, of course, I'm not you know, 100 percent trusted in Apple. But uh, what's the issue with that? Why can't people have their right. privacy? And now the whole thing is going into Silicon Valley and getting the tech companies to work with the government. And that story I told you today, how the internet was going to break ties with the government. Yeah. You have the government who just had the personnel files of everybody that works for it mm -hmm. exposed. Right. And now they want, they say, oh, you know, you can trust us with your private information. And look, whenever you're dealing on the internet, you, you may not be using PGP for your email or whatever. But you're still encrypted. Whenever you're buying anything on the internet, it's being sent encrypted, okay? You break that. Uh, you know, you're going to be exposed to losses, and there's a lot of fraud that's going on. We need to have more encryption. We need to have more privacy. We need to have more security. Those are good things for us to have. He wants only the government to have security, only the government to have safety. And they're going to do that by taking away your security, taking away your financial safety, taking away your privacy, your liberty, because he's going to meet with the CEOs of these multinational corporations and hash that out. Right. No, not not consult the uh, uh, not consult the Constitution. Let's go to Richard Reeves at uh, in South Carolina. Richard. Hey, David. Thank you for uh, handing the ball off to me. And earlier, you know, we had these protesters that were right by the Coliseum doors. I know Joe Biggs was on there when uh, they were there, and we had an interview with one of the young ladies. And what was interesting about that was uh, I was super curious about. Okay, earlier. All the protesters or any demonstrators, even uh, some of the people that were pro for some of the uh, debate candidates, were sent <laughs> back. They were sent back to the uh, <laughs> no, the free speech zone, which was out of the way, out in behind the Coliseum practically. And then, uh, so I went and asked the police captain while Joe Biggs was being interviewed by you guys. I said, I asked the police captain, why are these guys allowed up front here and not sent to the free speech zone? He says, well, people don't have to go to the free speech zone if they don't want to. So how about that? Yeah, they can yeah. just shut up, right? right. And, of course, yeah, you're being, so, you're being, uh, mean, you're being photobombed by some low-information protesters. I would, love, I would love to find out if that person <laughs> holding the anarchy flag is uh, feeling the burn.
Can we just find out if that person... Yeah, you got somebody yeah, holding up an anarchy flag behind you, another one holding up, don't believe the liberal media. I guess they think we're the liberal media. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the, the, the young people earlier basically said they're pretty much kind of against uh, government, period, anarchist, and uh, pretty much low information, except that they follow Trump intensely. Yeah, So yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. interesting how they're selectively, uh, intensively following certain people within the government. And, uh, so are you know, they feeling the burn? Do they are they yeah. voting for Bernie? Because I mean, that's like, that's like the anarchists or these fake anarchists. They they think Bernie is the answer, but he's mm -hmm. like massive government. Hey, well, you got, some of them might be, but they weren't willing to admit to it right now. Uh, they're they're gone, but you got somebody standing right behind you says, "Don't believe the liberal media." Ask them if they think uh, you're the liberal media. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, come on in. Do you think we're the liberal media? We're just here getting our message across. Yeah, come on in the shot here. Who, who does he think All the right. liberal media is? Yeah, who do you think the liberal media is? Oh, uh, we're just here promoting the Media Research Center. Um, our mission is just to uh, promote, uh, point out bias in the media, and um, liberal media is, can be whoever you want it to be. Okay. So, who, <laughs> so you know, name okay. some networks or some personalities that you think are the liberal media. I'd rather not say that. Um, like I said, be whoever you want to be because everybody's uh, definitely Don't ask me a question, bro. It varies from person to person. So if you think some people may think Don't Fox News me, is liberal, bro. some people may think CNN, MSNBC, any of the any other networks out there. Okay. Is there uh, any media that you would consider to be on target with uh, how they report the news? Well, we cover everybody. Uh, our job is to point out bias in the media, so we watch everybody from the local networks to ESPN. I mean, we cover all spectrums of the media. Just point ESPN. out um, liberal bias, conservative <laughs> bias, liberal all, bias, all, the, all bias coverage. in the media. What we're hey, well, you know there. what? Ask him if he's heard of InfoWars. Right. Ask him if he's What's heard of InfoWars. Ask him if he's uh, heard of Do you ever listen to InfoWars? I have listened to you guys several times, um, and you, I've actually seen you've covered media, uh, MRC articles, um, so it's a good organization. Thanks. Right. Okay, so... Great. Uh, Great. <laughs> are we uh, in that batch with the liberal media, or what do you what do you consider Infowars? I don't have that. That's above my pay grade to say uh, <laughs> where you guys fall, but we do appreciate the work you guys do. Uh, like I said, you've covered many of our articles um, that we've written and, and covered our on topics like that. Okay, well, since All you right. kind of like Infowars, then your pay grade should go up. I think. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay, that's All good. Right. There we that's good. Thanks, Richard. So give the man a raise. He likes Infowars at least. Yeah, so that's right. He but, couldn't name ABC, CBS, NBC, you know, CNN, but hey, at least he liked InfoWars. That's good. Yeah, that's that's, that's good. All right, we're gonna. Thanks, Richard. We're gonna go back. They've started the debate again, and uh, we've okay. got uh, John Kasich talking about uh, hammers and screwdrivers at the Pentagon. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Okay. That's a, that's right, that's a thanks. change, isn't it? Thank you, Richard. That's who I stand up for. That's who's in my mind. So the Pentagon doesn't even have enough money for hammers and screwdrivers? I, I don't understand. Oh, he's probably talking about the proverbial $600 hammer that they have at the, uh, the Pentagon or whatever. You're the know. ones that built this country but, uh, and will carry it into the future. Thank you. Governor. Oh, finally. Actually, you know, I mean, there are reasons why they have some highly expensive specialized tools, right? <laughs> but, but, the, what, but what they ought to talk about is all the wars that we start that we don't need to be involved in. They don't talk about that. That's why all this stuff about, you know, waste in the Pentagon. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, but it's really the waste of life and the uh, needless undeclared wars that they won't focus on. Look, there's a highly specialized tool right there. Talk about what they're going to do. I've done it. I ask for your support to build. This is their closing statements. Safer and stronger America. I like that the last statement I've heard from he's, Jeb Bush. He's he through war. Jeb, and I earned that. Great debate tonight. Uh, when I think about the folks who are out there at home tonight watching, and I think about what they had to watch this week. This and I think about what they're eating <laughs> in their dinner. <laughs> I'm starving. The President of the United States, <laughs> who talked a fantasy land about the way they're feeling. They know that this country is not respected around the world anymore. They know that this country is pushing the middle class, the hardworking taxpayers backwards. And they saw a president who doesn't understand. Gotta agree, it was yeah. a state of the onion address. 
And he's just going to smack somebody in the face, you know? That's <laughs> We need someone to fight. <laughs> just gonna smack people. somebody upside the head. Yeah. That's the way Chris Christie is. I've lived my whole life fighting. <laughs> Slap fighting him Fighting for things that I believe in. <laughs> fighting for justice and to protect people from crime and terrorism. He's a fighter. He's gonna fight. He's gonna fight. For folks who have he's not fighting. had enough. I'm gonna slap and these people from New Jersey, man. And to <laughs> no, he's gonna yeah, shoot the, the Russian jets out the sky like he's duck hunting. We're gonna make America much more exceptional. 